Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna check out three different par meters because I've got three in my hands at the moment and I figured I may as well compare them against each other and bring you guys along for the ride. So recently I uh, reached out to a few of my uh, reefing friends and said, has anyone got uh, access to or has a par meter that I could borrow? Because I wanted to see where these uh, Philips Coral Cares and uh, Orphec OR3s were at. And I covered some of that in the, the video that I did on those uh, lighting setup recently. Now, as a result, <laughs> sometimes you get lucky and I was hoping to get my hands on one par meter. I actually ended up getting my hands on three par meters and I figured it'd be too good of an opportunity to miss to uh, not put these three par meters up against each other and just see what sort of results we get. So I'll start off with the one that I actually had my hands on first. And this is a, um, this is Senai Reef. It is actually the Felix Smart branded unit. Um, this one came from a uh, Felix Smart controller that I was hoping to test that turned out not to be that smart and um, is currently bricked. But um, thankfully the uh, Senai component, which is just a uh, USB -E, Edition plugs in, have a slide, I can do the uh, part testing with this. And I've heard amazing things from these units. They cost about, I think they're about $400 in Australia, maybe a bit less, maybe 300, um, maybe 200, I'm not sure. Check out the links um, to see how much they cost. Like I said, I did get this one with the Felix Smart, so I don't actually know how much it cost. Um, but I have heard that these, despite kind of only adding the par meter on as an optional extra, are apparently very, very accurate. So I'm really keen to see how it goes. Now, at the other end of the scale, I've got the um, latest and greatest Apogee MQ510. This is the full underwater um, setup with the, uh, the blue sensor. And um, this is meant to be the, uh, the latest and greatest. Runs at about, I think, maybe about $800 US. Um, I'll, I'll put the prices down in the video below because, um, again, I haven't bought any of these. These are just loaned to me from friends. So um, huge shout out to everyone that loaned me their uh, par meters. But this is the one, if I was going to buy a brand new par meter, this is the model I'd be looking to buy. It's current, it's made for, um, it's made for underwater use, and it's really sort of been targeted in at our uh, aquarium lighting. So the third and final unit we have is uh, the good old faithful, again, an Apogee. This one's the quantum meter. The model number is QMSWSS. This is actually the unit I used for um, the, the video I did previously on measuring the par of um, the Philips Coral Care and the uh, Orphic OR3s. This is a super simple unit. Um, I couldn't find it listed on the Apogee website anymore. It obviously seems to be a fairly old one. It doesn't have a, um, doesn't have a manufacturer's date on it, but... Um, it seems super simple. When it was loaned to me, it was pointed out that for uh, LEDs, you should apply a 10% correctional factor to it. So um, we'll be, I'll be curious to see how it goes up against the, uh, the new latest and greatest Apogee and then the uh, cheap and cheerful um, uh, Senai Reef. So basically what I did is I rigged up a little, um, a little bit of uh, acrylic, mounted my uh, three sensors on there. I'll just push this one back on there just to make sure that all three sensors were as close to in a line as possible and that when they were attached to this bit of uh, plate that they're all on exactly the same angle so that there's no um, misconceptions in the uh, readings, give, readings given by having one on a bit of an angle pointing away from the light or pointing closer to the light. This keeps them all perfectly parallel and I've done my best to get the sensors in a row there. Obviously there's a little bit of gap between them so I mean where the uh, Felix is or the, the Senai sorry is reading its uh, light we're talking about um, eight centimeters or um, maybe about three inches across to where the uh, MQ510 is reading its light from. But realistically at the um, height and the spread of the um, Philips Coral Care, it's not gonna make any difference. So um, I guess we'll rig this up. I'll get the, the uh, laptop, oh, sorry, the computer display for the um, Senai Reef so you can see it. I'll stick these two um, handheld displays up on the monitor so you can see them. I'll run through a few different uh, brightnesses. So we'll go through some different brightnesses ranging from like 5% brightness up to 100% brightness. We'll have a look at uh, full blue spectrum, full white spectrum, and then right in the middle where we'd run a uh, full reefing sort of uh, coral happy spectrum. So we'll be able to see these results live and we'll go from there and then we'll wrap things up. 
right here's the rig i've zoomed in a little bit on the uh, display there so you can get a closer look but after this session here i will do an even closer view in on, on uh, the two displays and the monitor so you can get a good close look but uh, instantly you can see the two apogee meters there are pretty close to each other we're talking a few par between them but uh, the Senai is nearly double which is um, a little bit of a worry um I don't mind to see, you know, a 5% variance between the sensors, but 200% is a bit much for my liking. I'll move the sensor over here. Again, the Apogee is pretty close. I mean, they the figures are bouncing around a little bit, but um, the Senai is approximately double, sometimes a bit less than double, sometimes just a touch over a double. It is a little bit hard with all of these cords, um, trying to keep them out of each other's way and off the display, but... Um, if anything, the older Apogee is possibly reading a touch higher than the newer Apogee, um, and the Senai is reading heaps, heaps higher. Now, what will be interesting is in a second, I'll actually move in closer so you can have a closer look at the displays, but I will also run through a few different brightnesses and a few different spectrums so we can see if these uh, similarities or inconsistencies, um, depending on which two sensors you're looking at, I guess, um, whether that varies at all. But um, when I keep the uh, sensors fairly level and I get them all pointing at the same sort of light source, we're talking a fairly um, sizable difference. So let's zoom in and have a closer look. I'm going to start things off. Let's have a look here. Let me see the, all the sensors there. This is mid-power, full spectrum, so blues and whites. We can see the two Apogees very, very close, and the um, Senai is about double, just a touch under double. In fact, the two Apogees almost mimic each other there very nicely. We move now into mid-power with whites only. I was curious to see if this made a difference, and it does look like... Oh, no, the Senai is just a bit slower adjusting. It has gone up to double. Okay, the two quantum uh, two apogees are staying near each other. Move things into uh, mid-power at blue only. Now you can see the uh, two um, apogees uh, reading around about 100, 90 to 100, and uh, the Senai is up to 170, so a little bit closer, not quite double that time, um, which which is interesting. It also was a little bit slower to react, but that's, I mean, that's understandable. It's a USB device going through a Windows 10 mini computer out to a display rather than an electronic display itself. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hovering around there. We're just going to adjust these lights again. Now, this is giving us, uh, what do we got here? We have a mid-power whites only again. And you can see uh, the two quant uh, two apogees sticking very, very close to each other, mimicking nicely. Um, and almost almost to the uh, dot, the par on the... Uh, Senai is about double, uh, maybe just a touch under double. It always seems to be around about 190%. And uh, let's just keep adjusting these spectrums to see if uh, we can trick any of these to giving us a little bit of a different uh, value. We'll give it another little swing here. Let's pop in. Let's go for low power on whites only. Now, this, I should point out that the sensors are, you know, it's about a almost on the sand bed here just where it uh, sat nicely on its own so I could fiddle with the uh, different power you can see under uh, this setting here the Senai yeah, it's still about double I was going to say it's closer but it's not it's just because we're at lower par so it looks like it's not as far off we've got uh, low power with full spectrum here uh, we very quickly jump back up to almost double again but the two uh, Pogies are sticking pretty close to each other the older one reading just a touch higher maybe reads you know, between 5 and 10 par higher fairly consistently. And uh, we'll give these uh, spectrums another little change. We're under full power, full spectrum. And uh, let's see, what do we got? The Senai has gone up to almost, or has hit 400. Uh, the two uh, quantums are 215, 220, 230. So they're staying pretty close. But yeah, again, the Senai a long way up. Full power white only. I'm just doing this live with the uh, Philips Coral Care um, app on my Mac. You see the uh, two Apogee staying very close to each other. The uh, Senai, again, moving a fair way off, annoyingly, but at least it is consistent, which is all you ask for, I guess. Now, uh, and you do also see you get the uh, colorometer change and the spectrum change uh, with, uh, with the uh, Senai, which is pretty handy. And we've gone full power blue only here. If you could see the um, sand change that uh, deep blue in the background. Again, the two Apogees staying fairly consistent within 5 to 10 par of each other. And uh, the Senai about double again, maybe just a touch under double. And then to finish things off, let's do full power, full spectrum, because, um, you know, that's where we probably run most of these things. And uh, 
again, almost double, probably about 190%. So uh, at least we're consistent. That's all I can say on uh, that particular part there. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you found that as interesting as I did. I must admit, I'm a little disappointed in the uh, Sinai Reef from some of the other YouTube videos I'd seen. I was under the impression that it was gonna be really close uh, to the, the more expensive apogee meters. Turns out uh, that it ended up being quite a long way off the others, which is a little bit concerning. Now, I did note that people are talking about this firmware one and firmware two. Full disclosure, I could not find where to identify this firmware to, considering that uh, the Senai that um, I have is a fairly new one. In fact, I literally just activated it, set it all up on the account. I imagine if there was any firmware to update, it would have done it then. I've had a good look through the menu. I couldn't find any firmware listings or options to update the firmware. If you know um, how to do that and uh, you think that I have missed it, if there is something that I'm meant to manually do, let me know and I'll run this test again. But um, out of the box, plug it in, set it all up. That was what I got from the uh, Sinai Reef. And um, you could see, particularly under the uh, full spectrum, interestingly, it's a little bit closer under the blue spectrum, but under the full spectrum, I guess, if anything, it was fairly consistently reading double what the apogees were reading, which, I mean, that should be easy enough to uh, just look at half that value and, and make your mind up from that, but um, it is a little concerning. But uh, I guess probably the big takeaway for me was um, the brand new latest and greatest um, apogee as opposed to the old um, discontinued model that you might find secondhand really cheap. These two were almost identical. There was a, only ever a few par between the two and you can see when we move the lights around live, they would be very responsive and catch up to each other very quickly. So I guess if you're in the market for a brand new par meter um, and you're looking at this, like I said, if I was gonna buy a brand new one, this is the one I would have been looking at. I'd probably keep my eyes out for a second hand unit like uh, this guy here because um, you're gonna pick it up at a fraction of the cost and I mean, you saw the results. It was next to this one the whole way, no matter what the color spectrum was, no matter what the intensity was, it was right there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was just a bit of a quick one today. Like I said, I had my hands on three different power meters. I couldn't help but uh, compare them, and I figured if I'm gonna compare them, I might as well bring the camera out, take you guys along for the journey. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up because that tells the YouTube alg algorithms, wow, that uh, you thought it was good and uh, other reefers may enjoy watching this video, and it goes a long way to helping me out. And speaking of helping me out, um, if you have not yet, please consider subscribing down in that corner. A um, little bell there, hit the button and the bell. That'll make sure you won't miss any future videos. One last thing I want to say is a huge shout out to all of uh, the Parker's Reef followers from all around the world. We've had um, some pretty cool uh, interactions from uh, Tidal Gardens just recently with Coral View in America. And um, I have had a huge influx from, um, uh, from reefers from the UK, particularly from Scotland. Um, they've been uh, joining the channel and uh, commenting along and really enjoying it, all the um, interaction with you guys. So thank you very much. I appreciate all of the um, all of the interaction and all of the uh, all of the views and things that are uh, happening on this channel from all around the world. So um, thank you very much, guys. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.